The coal mines of Centralia, Pennsylvania go back to the 1850s. The town was based on coal in all senses. It stood on a coal mine, and its residents used it not only to fuel their homes, but also to fuel the town's economy. By the end of the 19th century, it already had more than 2,700 people, most of whom were miners and their families. People dwelling there were happy, and nothing seemed to disturb their peace. They had a good job in the stable coal industry that was powerful enough to overcome even serious economic disasters. The flourishing industrial town had only one, but quite a cute problem. There was way too much garbage, and its quantity would grow at breakneck speed, spreading bad smell and attracting rats. By the middle of the 20th century, there were eight illegal dumps. It was in 1962 that local authorities made one large landfill, searching to solve the town's stinky problem. Yet creating a bigger landfill took a heavy toll. Rats and bad odors started haunting Centralia even more. The amount of waste was tremendous, and no one wanted their cozy town to look like this, especially on the Memorial Day holiday. The council didn't give up, and in May of 1962, they decided to get rid of all the trash by simply burning it to ashes. They were sure this method could make their hometown clean again. One thing they couldn't foresee – the fire burned on the surface, yes, but beneath it also. The fire spread, and the people didn't realize they were actually walking on the ground that had burning coal underneath them. Having sparked in May of 1962, the fire never stopped burning. The town's been ablaze for over 50 years now. Back then, people couldn't believe such a thing could happen to their beloved little town. It was slowly but inevitably burning out. And worse still, it was threatening to take all of them with it into the fiery abyss. The fire spread quickly through an opening in the pit. Cracks and fissures let the oxygen in, so the blaze soon got bigger, setting even more coal on fire. To make matters worse, the flames were almost invisible on the surface. To stop them, people needed to know which mine exactly was burning, but it was next to impossible. Mines are a complex system of underground tunnels. With no special equipment available, the locals started realizing it was time they'd given up. Fires were blazing under the feet of unknowing residents, becoming hotter with every passing day. Fumes were rising from under the ground, making people cough and their eyes go wet from acidic tears. Carbon monoxide levels weren't safe. The town got full of smoke. The fire was getting so relentless that the fumes could even pour out of sinkholes. Many basements were filled with smoke too. It got hotter than ever before in Centralia. With the raging fire, the temperature underneath the ground reached a critical 900 degrees Fahrenheit while the absolute record was 1,350 degrees. People's lives were at stake. Apparently, only temporary measures to stop the fire could be taken. The mines would burn for a while, and then firefighters would drown them with water, which didn't quite accomplish the purpose. Water was no remedy for Centralia burning from the inside. The local council couldn't manage to put the fire out, so there was nothing left to do but to make people leave the once prosperous town that got extremely unhealthy and unsafe. The mines would have to be shut down, ending the town's economy. Respiratory problems, hypertension, and even such issues as depression and anxiety haunted the residents and made living in this town almost impossible. Most people tried to escape the town at all costs. Toxic gases emitted by the mines were no less dangerous than the fire itself. Some people were also afraid that their residences could drastically fall in price because of the neighboring mines. They were terrified, thinking they could lose everything they'd earned working hard in hot and dusty coal mines. Although the workers were used to bad ventilation, at that point, the town was not that different from a mine they worked in. But even so, not everyone volunteered to leave their hometown. Some people wanted to keep their household, whatever the cost. In turn, Congress decided not to get rid of the fire in Centralia, but to get rid of the residents. By 1983, over $7 million was spent not only to control the fire, but also to provide emergency relocation for some of the residents. In the following 30 years, about $42 million were spent on the relocation program. Around $52,000 was spent on each household, calculated on square footage and values of real estate in neighboring zones. 
Basically, the state bought almost all the houses that were there, but now nobody can purchase any property in this town. The town became deserted, and in the end, after September 18, 2003, they even eliminated its zip code. There was almost nothing left but seven residents. The homeowners fought for their rights in federal court and were eventually allowed to stay. By 2017, there were only five people left, none of them aged under 18. There are few public services for them and only a group of volunteer firefighters. The only fire engine they have is more than 30 years old. The total burning surface is estimated to be as large as 400 acres, as if almost the entire Principality of Monaco was on fire. Still, the area is pretty patchy, so it's not that everything burns at the same time. Another issue is that it spreads not only in area, but in depth, too. Mines are about 300 feet deep and stretch over 8 miles, and the total area is about 3,700 acres. If it continues burning as it does today, the coal deposits are likely to last for at least 250 years. A bustling town that gave people resources turned into a place ill-suited for living. Centralia is a bit of a ghost town now. Its streets are deserted, most people abandoned this place long ago, and there are almost no buildings left. And yet, Centralia is not the only coal-fueled fire that lasts this long. Coal fires are pretty common across the globe. In Jara, India, the underground flames were first spotted back in 1916. Surprisingly, more than 80,000 people still live there, despite the fumes. The source of the fire is unknown. It could have been caused by lightning or some other natural disaster. A city on fire for over a century is not a record either. Australian burning mountains have been smoldering for about 6,000 years now, and some people even claim that the fire's been burning around 15,000 years already. The mountains aren't burning, but rather smoking, since the sulfur smoke gets to the surface through cracks. These cracks keep the area constantly on fire. The air gets in through the holes, and the blaze just won't stop. Not only fumes, but the odor won't let you breathe there. The air smells sulfurous, ooh, and it's scorching hot with over 600 degrees on the surface and about 3,000 degrees underneath the ground where the coal's burning.